to talk about what is often called a boxcar filter or an averaging filter. And it's something you typically get if you say, I want to have a whole bunch of inputs and I just want to have a whole bunch of inputs, but I want to have an average over three or five or eight or so number of inputs. Typically in a way to try to remove some of the variability, some of the noise, some of the things that we know that may not be there. Typical approach for this is to say, let me take the let me take an input set of data or an input waveform and sample it a lot more than I have to, knowing for well there's variability, maybe due to noise, due to the sampling or whatever, and then I am going to then average through it or run what is often called a moving average because I'll use an FIR filter of the form here where I'm going to take average the m samples from k equals 0 to m minus 1 and see what I would get. So it's exactly as we would expect averaging tends to reduce variation. This is why we often average. This is why we average uh, a number of things of exams because we go well let's figure out what the at uh, what overall the right number looks like right this is why we average in all sorts of things that we do so the question then is well, what does this physically start to look like and and again this is the physical formulation of it this is always going to be a low pass filter and so low pass means you're going to amplify or at least preserve signals that are lower frequency and higher frequency you're going to try to remove. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit more carefully because we can certainly look at the overall case, but I think it's once you kind of see the sort of specific case, it starts becoming clear what's ever, what the more general cases all tend to look like. So a three input average gives you a sort of structure, gives you an impulse response that's pretty much zero, then you get three up and then down. This is why you often call it a boxcar from its impulse response, because if it was seven, it would go out seven or nine or whatever the length is you're working with. And then you take this and you realize that this for just three actually gives you this very straightforward struct uh, difference equation, which isn't surprising. It's one third times the sum of the first three samples. And this feels like what you would do for averaging. Now, it's not taking three samples and average and then move over a couple samples. You're, you're kind of continuously working with this as a filter. And so let's take a look at this. Imagine I have this X of N, which has a whole bunch of different frequencies. Notice very much flat, very much flat. Uh, we have a step up, which might have meant there's an actual step in the, si in the system. And oh yeah, there's also this sort of jittery sort of thing that's going on. Was that intentional? Was it not? Don't know. If I'm probably average, trying to do an averaging filter, I probably have a sense that it's not, and I might want to remove it. But who knows what the reality actually is? And then a drop down. Well, what do I see when I actually run this input through this impulse response, which of course is a convolution? What do I see, right? In other words, I'm computing this function. Well, what I see is I've got this y of n. And again, it's flat. Right at zero, I see the first response because until zero, nothing shows up, right? An either impulse response. And then notice it's a little bit slow coming up. It looks flatter at the top and slow coming down. So I have this almost smooth edge because this edge here is very sharp. It's high frequency behavior and I'm trying to low pass filter it. So if I do a low pass filter, my edges are gonna get less sharp. And this is something to always pay attention to for any linear filter. Now here also notice all this jumpy variation has now dropped down. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it might be what I desired if I'm using this type of a filter. But good to know that what the different properties are. Now, another way to look at this is ask, what is this frequency response? What well, is H of J omega? And we know that this is the impulse response, so that says that, okay, now I'm going to have these three coefficients for those three terms. If you're used to thinking about a, um, a Z transform, you realize you've got a Z minus 1, Z minus 2. All of these are consistent. And so I get a 1 third plus a 1 plus e to the minus j omega hat plus e to the minus 2 j omega hat. And you think, okay, that's great. That gives me something in, in omega hat. Uh, and I can write all this down. Um, typically, we can actually pull this together. This is actually the phase term, and then this gives me the magnitude. 
Because if I look at this e to the minus j omega, or e to this j omega, and then e to this minus j omega term, what I find here is that, in fact, this would actually give me uh, 1 plus 2 cosine uh, for this particular term. It is slightly miswritten here and miswritten here. Um, the more careful slides will, will correct that. And then the phase is this, coming from here down. And so what you end up seeing in the magnitude is that this is 1, and then this basically comes down to 0 and actually comes back up because there's actually a sign change. It's actually trying to go through 0 and come back up. This is very, very common for a lot of low-pass filters that come through 0 and come back up. And when you look at this structure, what you get is still something that's very much linear phase in the middle. It's just changing directly. And then I get a jump due to the sign change. Again, I didn't account for it in the magnitude, but I did account for it in the phase. But it's still the phase itself is linear. Um, it just turns out that the signs are shifting through this. But basically, I can see it's a low-pass filter. That frequencies that are basically, you know, factor, you know, that are about two-thirds of the way there are pretty much zero. You might sort of call that to be a zero, and that's actually a very important term as one gets into further and transfer functions and things like this. But the low frequencies are fine, the high frequencies get pulled away. And this is exactly what you'd expect. If I add more terms to this, instead of it being three, if it was seven, you would expect this would be much sharper. It would drop and it would bounce through here multiple times. So these boxcar filters are very valuable in so many different places. And so it's very important to get a sense of what these will actually do.